Frogger. Now there's actually two ports of Frogger on the Atari 2600. There's the Parker Brothers version that we're looking at today, and the Star Path Supercharger. An accessory sort of game kit for the 2600 that uses cassette tapes. I'm not really sure how that works, I don't have one myself, and it seems a little more complicated than the basic cart version of Parker Brothers Frogger. In this game you control a frog nicknamed Frogger who has to make it home at the top of the screen. You start at the bottom of the screen and you must first cross a busy road with multiple lanes and multiple cars. If you look at the details on the small print, you can see it says Sega Enterprises. So this is Sega. You might think it's a Sega game, not a Konami game. Well, Sega didn't actually make this game either. Gremlin Industries was an arcade game manufacturer in the late 70s or the mid 70s as well. And they, at one point in 1978, got bought out by Sega. Okay, we're getting a little bit closer here. Released in 1983 for arcades by Atari. You know it, it's Star Wars Arcade. Yeah, that's our focus today on Gamer Peace Theater. Press five, I'm going in. Basically, when you're going down the trench run, don't shoot anything. Use the force. Let the force guide you. And then the only thing you shoot is the exhaust port. You will get a use the force bonus. You get a lot of extra points. Now that use the force bonus may not always work depending on how hard the gameplay is at that point. But I've done it before. And is it worth it? Eh, yes or no. It depends on how much points you're going for or how long you think you can last during the gameplay. A couple other little easter eggs are you can see May the Force Be With You spelled out in the side of the Death Star as you fly by into the Death Star because I haven't seen it as much recently and that is the cockpit version. Yes, a cockpit. You climb aboard the Star Wars themed experience known as the cockpit arcade machine and get ready for a ride of your life on the X-Wing. It's very fun and just going inside something at an arcade is just an experience in itself. It, it adds a little more to the immersion and it, it heightens the experience overall. Normally I review video games. Today we're reviewing a board game based on a video game. And this is Monopoly Gamer Mario Kart. And on this one, they are all based upon different racetracks from the game Mario Kart. And it looks like they're all actually not just Mario Kart, but they're Mario Kart 8 specifically. So if you played Mario Kart 8 on Nintendo Wii U, or you played Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch, these are all gonna be familiar to you. Ability, you can move to the next superstar space, pick up any coins you pass or land on, power up boost, take one coin from each player. So that's Rosalina's abilities. And it adds up to a very fun experience on a board game. And to me, this looks like one of the better board game adaptations of a video game. This game, The Grinch, was based on Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas story and takes elements from the book, the cartoon, and the Jim Carrey movie and makes its own story a prequel to How the Grinch Stole Christmas. More How the Grinch Destroyed Christmas rather than How the Grinch Stole Christmas. There isn't much thievery going on. Now for some of the good key highlights of the game. Big levels. I actually really like being able to complete multiple missions and stay in the level. Creative missions. Some of the missions are pretty basic, like destroy presents or posters in the mayor. Yet some of them are more elaborate, including stealth missions and clock tower puzzles. There are some missions that require backtracking with the use of a new gadget, which gives it an almost 3D Metroidvania style. My first Game Boy. Yes, this is my first Game Boy. A little bit damaged, but it still runs and it still works fine. It's still one of my favorite things in my video game collection just because it was my first Game Boy. That's a big deal. And I'm really happy that I still have it. And what was one of those first games that I got for the Game Boy back in the day? The controls are fairly simple because on the Game Boy you just have the D-pad and B and A. So when you're playing, you have the ability to jump or the ability to attack. The basic controls for attacking are very simple in this game, but they are different than the NES games of Ninja Turtles and different than the arcade games as well. You have a single button attack, which will do for most enemies in the game, destroying them with just one hit. Even the boss fights, you have to attack them by using your normal attack. Additionally, you have the option to press down an attack to allow you to throw ninja stars. You 
You know, for a Super Nintendo game, this game sure has a lot of references to Genesis. What is Genesis? GIVE ME GENESIS! Actually, there was a version of the game released for the Sega Genesis, but you need the 32X adapter. Fire torpedoes for a bomb weapon, and also fire phasers for a laser-like attack. You can also change the rate of speed forward or reverse, and rotate the ship in any direction in 3D space movement. The game plays like a dogfight with more control of various parts of the ship. With that ship destroyed in the combat simulator, the next section on Starfleet Headquarters' map menu is the cafeteria. Let's battle the scenario against the villainous Khan. Khan! 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 Not on Atari consoles. No. Not even on Sega Genesis. The main competition. Not available on there. You can't run it. What about Sega CD? No. What about Nintendo? Come on, it's gotta run a Nintendo, right? Everything runs a Nintendo. Nintendo NES? Not that one. What about the Game Boy? No! Not Game Boy. You know why? Because this is a 16-bit generation, 16-bit console, 32 megs coming at you. The most full-rendered Highest graphic game of the year. Looks beautiful, sounds beautiful, plays awesomely. Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. And animation for each sprite for a given memory footprint than had previously been achieved on the Super Nintendo. George Zachary from Silicon Graphics. I was wondering if you could help me out a little bit in explaining the game. Sure, it's uh, it's it's a really cool game. It was created on this thing called the Challenge, which is this really advanced supercomputer. Basically, if you picture 20 supercomputers in a box. How do we make the, the roundness, the 3D? It was not just the graphics that were new for Donkey Kong Country, it was also the sound and music. David Wise, known for doing music on previous Rare NES games, and who composed a majority of the music for Donkey Kong Country, based the musical style and sound for each level upon the level's design and setting. Thankfully, they did not let you down with the final boss. It's an awesome epic boss fight. The and I just got back from the Cowlitz Gamers for Kids Retro Gaming Expo 2019, and that is located in Longview, Kelso, Washington. This is a charity event in some ways. Now this expo was similar to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo that I went to back last year in October and did a video on that as well. This was sort of like a smaller version of that. There were some of the same vendor booths, some of the same people going there, and I ran into a lot of really cool people as well. Uh, but actually, it turns out this one right here of Leonardo is the newest one, surprisingly. This was 2003, so it's like a year that was in that pack as well. So that kind of sealed the deal. Donatello, Shredder, and Usagi Ojimbo, that's really cool. Now This is my Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2019 video. Now when you first walk into the building, you'll see the arcade. And not just an arcade, but it's like half of the expo was an arcade, half of it was vendors. There is an arcade in the back, half of the arcade is pinball, and half of it is arcade machines. But before that, there's a lot of game consoles set up, and these game consoles range from the Super Famicom and the Sega Saturn, all the way to the Xbox. There was a whole bunch of Xboxes connected for a Halo video game tournament. Uh, not like a big tournament, but like one that people could just join in with. And there was lots of game systems. Each one, I believe you could request a game, but we usually just played a game that was already set up, such as Castlevania, or DuckTales, or The Legend of Zelda. Um, I played some other games, I think it was Darius on the Super Famicom. It was a really cool shooter. Uh, it was really, really a fun one. Um, there were some people playing 8-player Bomberman on the Sega Saturn. There was... Just a lot of stuff. Oh, even Cybermorph. Where did you learn to fly? Whoa! Where am I? Strange things are afoot in Kevin's game room. Man, I'm definitely not on Earth. 
I must be inside some sort of parallel universe, an alternate dimension, inside a computer, something. How did I get here? Oh yeah, I jumped through that wall. Maybe it was the power, the true power of the Nintendo Power Glove that brought me to this alternate dimension or parallel universe or some strange place. Wait a minute. Who's that? for an awesome video game from your past, a memorable video game. And guess what, bro? I've got it right here. The true power of the Nintendo Power Glove combined with my wish must have transported me into the game reverse. Alright, Kevin, here's a memorable game from your past, straight from the game reverse. And you're all set up to play, all ready to go on the game reverse. So be warned, this is only a demo, a mere taste of your past. Now get ready to check out this awesome video game right here in the Game Reverse. Wow, Zlorp, that's an awesome gift. This should cure that nostalgia, that itching feeling for playing a memorable game from my past. Thank you so much, Zlorp. Wow, a PlayStation demo disc? Let's check this out today here in the Game Reverse.